Hi, this is Amy from the Alti store. Elsie and I want to show you a couple more videos on how to test your solar panel. All right, Elsie, you go work the camera. Good girl. Now, we recently put a video out showing how to measure the volts and amps, the open circuit voltage and the short circuit current of a solar panel that's not connected. And you can determine if the solar panel is working correctly that way. Now, if you, if you detect something like the voltage is wrong, so if it's full sunny out, you're in the right angle and everything's great, but instead of getting 22 volts, you're getting 12 volts. What that's going to point to is possibly one of the diodes that are in the solar panel junction box may have been blown. So we're going to show you how to test that and see if that's the problem. Okay, so first thing you need to do is bring the solar panel inside out of the sunlight. You don't want to be reading any power that's from, from the sun, okay? Now, you're going to grab your handy-dandy multimeter, and there's two different ways, maybe even three different ways, but I'm going to show you two different ways that you can test this. So I am going to turn my multimeter to the diode setting. Now, that is the setting that has the little, little arrow with a line through it. That's showing a diode, the anode and the cathode. See, I'll see that's the anode and the cathode. Excellent. So what a diode does is it allows the current to flow one direction. So it will not allow backflowed current. Now, in this particular solar panel, I can open up the junction box so I can see the diodes in here. Um, a lot of panels do not have box that you can open up. So, you know, maybe this test will just at least let you know what's going on. But if you do have a box that you can open up, you can go in and change them out and fix the panel. So I did another video all about diodes and the difference between blocking diodes and bypass diodes. So you can check that video out as well and um, get more information about that. Now, very, very important. You need to have the solar panels out of any light. Even inside of the shop light, I was getting enough reflective light off the floor from the ceiling lights that I was getting false readings. So you'll see I've actually got a piece of cardboard uh, behind it that is blocking. So I'm taking my meter and first I'm going to try with this on diode setting I'm going to connect the negative to the negative and the positive to the positive. Now what I'm reading is an overload. It's saying it's not allowing any current there. It's an open. Different meters will show you different readings. Mine shows OL. Um, some of them will have a 1 with no zeros after it. Um, so it, you'll know. It, it's, it's, not, it's clearly not a regular reading. So this is good. This is saying in one direction it's blocking like it's supposed to. So I'm going to switch them around and I'm going to put the plus on the negative and the negative on the plus. Here we go. We've settled down on 0.3 volts. So what this is saying is it's allowing 0.3 volts voltage drop across these diodes. So what I'm seeing inside here is two diodes. Different panels will have different numbers, but this particular one has two diodes. And these are bypass diodes. So what it's doing is if some of the cells in the solar panel get shaded and therefore the voltage drops, what this is going to do is allow the current to bypass across those, pan those cells so that you're not losing the whole panel. So I'm going to just check. I'm putting the positive on the anode, the negative on the cathode, and the cathode is the side with the bar on it. And I'm reading 0.15 volts. Now if you remember when we read across the whole thing, I was reading 0.3 volts. So what this is telling me is it, what 0.15 volts is basically opening the check valve and allowing the current to, to go through. So if I measure across the two of them, I'm going to measure about 0.3. So what this is telling me, again, same with that nice uh, readings that I did outside in the sun, this is telling me that these diodes are working and they're fine. So if you were to measure that overload both directions, what that would tell you is that it's open and therefore it's broken. 
if you were to be measuring a low voltage both directions, that's going to tell you that it's actually shorted. Another way you can measure this is if you don't have a multimeter that has a diode setting, you can use the ohm setting. And what that will do is one direction, I'm reading about 12 mega ohms. The other direction, it's open. So same thing. It's, it's an open connection one direction and it is, it is 12 mega ohms resistance the other direction. So if you do determine that you need to replace the diode, a lot of times the diode will have the, the um, model number right on it. So you can just Google it. It's a Schottky diode usually, and you can check the, um, the model number on the diode itself. If you can't find a model number, you need to make sure that the diode can handle the voltage and the current that is going to be going through it. We do carry a couple of really small diodes, uh, enough for one amp or five amps, so enough really up to a 50 watt panel. So we don't really carry uh, many for, for bigger panels. So again, if you need a really small diode, just check out our site. If not, Google is your best friend. I hope this was helpful. If so, give us a like and a share and be sure to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to go to our website at altistore.com where we've been making renewable doables since 1999.